The Sweet 16 Predictions Part 2 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. The WinBet Casino is now offering a 100% deposit match up to $100 for new users. Download the WinBet app now or visit winnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Stable Duel. Stable Duel is a horse racing DFS app where you can play free and paid games for real cash prizes. You can win as much as $25,000 with one entry. Head over to stableduel.com to get started today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. Head over to propswap.com or download the PropSwap app today. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app for all of our free picks and podcasts. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. A lot's going on right now, Sean. Yes. There's there's going on. Don't worry. Mental juggling aside. Here to <laughs> here to talk college basketball once again, because that's what we do. We're gonna talk a ton of college basketball joining us as oh. College basketball, the host of the college basketball experience, Colby Dan, aka the. What's happening, Colby? I had some eggs Benedict for breakfast this morning, Sean. Oh, nice. Oh. What was the occasion? He, well, he celebrated. <laughs> it went the over joke. his head. It went totally over his missed head. it. Totally <laughs> missed it. Uh, all right, we got an awesome show for you guys today. We, of course, are going to be giving out all our uh, Sweet 16 predictions against the spread for the Friday games. And uh, yeah, before we get to that, though, we have a special guest joining us on the line. He is the co-founder of Prop Swap, Ian Epstein. Ian, uh, thanks for calling in the show, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, always, uh, always appreciate you hopping on. Of course, big, big fans of a uh, March Madness is, of course. I imagine for you guys a, a big time. A lot of people buying and selling. Uh, we you always send over some of the good stories. What are what are some of the fun uh, swaps that have happened so far in the tourney? Yeah. Um, so yeah, March Madness is our busiest time of year. Uh, it's pretty much the only time in sports where you'll have a team go from uh, a huge long shot to uh, a semi favorite within two days. Yeah. Uh, and the team that I think encapsulates it the most uh, uh, so far this tournament is North North Carolina. Uh, even you know after the they won the first round game, they were a hundred to one to win the championship. And then wow. after beating Baylor, after beating Baylor, they went from a hundred to one to twenty to one, right? So that, that's a five times X jump on their futures odds after winning one game, right? So if you had a hundred dollar bet on North Carolina, uh, and, and we did see some of these, you bet a hundred dollars on North Carolina, you could resell that ticket on Prospop for five hundred after the Baylor game. And that's compared to uh, a Baylor money line ticket when they were only plus 180 against, against Baylor, right? So uh, you can actually make more money by buying it just by by, by uh, betting money lines. Right, and I'm it, it just very micro take. If I'm on North Carolina, I'm pulling that ripcord right now. Let's go. <laughs> I'm heading over to Prop Swap. I'm cashing out. Maybe I've gone for two, and I'm getting all the. And you know, I. Never thought of that. Like obviously, I've thought of selling the futures that you got early on in the season, but the sure instead of just taking that team on the money line. And again, I'm not a huge math guy. Similar uh, with the Providence Friars, if they take down the Kansas Jayhawks, because I think over a, a win bet, I don't have it in front of me, Ryan, but I think they're like 75. 80 to one still. Oh, so disrespectful to Ed Cooley and the boys. I would imagine we could see if they're 80 to one right now and then they beat the Jayhawks, maybe they go to 10 to one. What, well, what, what? And uh, they would get a double digit seat after that, either Iowa State or Miami. Yeah. What do you, right. what do you, what would you expect the shift to be on a team like Providence? 
Exactly right. And so if you look at the money line right now, Providence on the money line is about plus 260, plus 270 right now, right? So I think it's very easy to say that if Providence beats Kansas, their futures uh, number would go up by three times, right? So I think if you know if they're about 80 to one right now, you would at least see 20 to one. That's a four times jump, right? Yeah. So basically you're getting four to one on your money just by uh, <sighs> by betting the future and reselling after a Kansas uh, uh, win versus betting, betting the money line, right? Uh, so yeah, there's, there's, if you can pick and choose the spots, right. But then, you know, you could look at a, you know, if, but if you wanted to bet like Gonzaga, for example, you may say, you know what, like I'm, you know, this is not the spot to, to bet, you know, Gonzaga on a future, but there's certain spots here. Right. Um, and the other thing too, and their strategy in this, and, and we see it, we've got lots of professional bettors who we use our site because what they do is uh, from a buying perspective, they jump on teams when someone else is going to lose. Right. So you're focused in, Oh my God, I can't believe Kentucky is, is about to lose this game right now, or, or I can't believe I was about to lose this game right now. While while people are watching, they're on props while pouncing on other futures that are being left up for sale, right? So uh, the Kansas, that, so when Iowa lost, Kansas numbers jumped tremendously because Iowa was the only actually good team in that top part of the region. Oh, and yeah. so when Iowa lost, their odds went, uh, Kansas odds went from like 14 to one to seven to one without even a, a, a game being played, right? So there's there's lots of layers of strategy that that you can play with prop swap in the futures. I'm just sitting up as a proud father of a Providence future that has just <laughs> been sitting uh, at no no positive EV or negative EV. I can't wait for them to upset. Well, and and I know uh, checking out the new site, it's awesome, and of course, uh, the the bid function is very fun. If you want to try and maybe that's great, you want to maybe. And eh, knock it, knock a couple dollars off. See if you can totally dial that in. How was how has the bid function kind of changed the uh, prop swap uh, marketplace? I tell every customer, right? Uh, they, they love the bidding, right? People want to feel like they're getting a deal, right? And so, uh, if you can bid on something that's less for it and it gets accepted, you're like, wow, I just got a great deal on that. And oftentimes, sellers will accept an offer when it's offered to them, you know, if it's less, right? They just sellers you know, it's, it's a big psychology, but they don't want to feel like they're leaving any money on the table. Right. So, you know, uh, you listen for hundred dollars, you know, you'd love a hundred, but you, you take 90, but you'd hate to think that you could have gotten, you know, more for it. Right. You, you, I don't listen for 90, I, but you know, I want to listen for hundred just to make sure I get all my money for it. Right. So, uh, you see tickets on prop shop for sale right now and you'll go, you know what, that's, that's a little overpriced, but i um, trust me, uh, sellers will oftentimes take less forward. They just want to feel like, you know, the, they got, they got, didn't leave any money on the table. So, um, the, the bid, the bid function is great. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's great for both buyers and sellers. Don't know if you knew this about me, Sean, but once upon a time I may have sold some stuff on eBay. Yeah. Reminds <laughs> me of that. Just that, you little, know, I was moving product. Hustle. I enjoyed being able to set the <laughs> price a little higher, but of course you want that liquidity. So there's always, a, there's always a price. Yeah. Right. And you know, on, on eBay, you know, sometimes you can, if something, if, uh, if it gets bid less than you think of, if you want, you're like, uh, you're like, actually, I, I, I want it more forward. Right. But on the beauty and prop shop is you never walk away with anything you don't want. Right. You have your buy it now price and then you get offers you can accept or reject, but you're never going to feel like, wow, that, that bidding didn't get where it's where I wanted to. So you'll, you'll never walk away with less than, uh, than you wanted. Now, when you, when you, when you guys uh, first launched prop swap, it was all physical tickets, correct? It was all based on, Hey, I went to the win. I got myself two tickets. Again, we highly recommend that one for the true DJs only sweating it out. No. Then one to kind of make your money back. But back in the day it was just a uh, printed ticket. I, I I've noticed now though, you also have the option to buy and sell digital uh, futures, right? Obviously through accredited sports books, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we, we do allow uh, certain customers to to sell mobile tickets. Um, you, there is an account approval process you have you have to go to. Uh, unfortunately, we're not at the point yet where sports books have a transfer button inside the app. We're we're working on it, right? Uh, you know, just like you would send you know tickets to a game. Uh, we're working on it, uh, and so there is a little bit of a of a trust factor there uh, with people who want to sell the mobile tickets. Uh, but there is a way to to sell the mobile tickets. Um, but we also suggest just making your original bet or your original purchase on prop swap as well. Right. Because yeah. uh, there's absolutely zero uh, headache or uh, friction in terms of reselling a purchase you made on prop swap. 
Uh, obviously, you've got the uh, the SP the, the uh, SGP promo code, right? So if you see oh, a team, yeah. instant uh, deposit that, bonus uh, up to five hundred dollars. Yeah, deposit bonus, right? So if you see a team that's for sale, like Houston, right, uh, for sale on PropSwap at twelve to one right now, which is better than any sports book. Use the promo code, and now you're getting twenty four to one on oh. on Houston when we uh, when we double your uh, your 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 uh, your deposit a bunch amount. Of, but, a bunch of people, uh, yes. li- a bunch of people listening right now. <laughs> just put two and two together and said, Holy shit. Well, it's, it's again, you're getting the best price. You get that nice deposit bonus. It's, it's the classic yeah. uh, win, win. I, uh, you know, we always hear the stories in the copy of like, Hey, he, uh, he had the Tennessee future and then he sold it uh, before they got knocked out, guaranteed himself a nice profit made money without, uh, without his ticket winning, which is a fun place to be at. What are the, what are the other sides of the stories? I'm sure you've seen those before where Hey, I do have, I do have uh, you know, UNC hundred to one, but I'm going to let it ride. Uh, and, and they keep pushing it and then they get cleaned out. What are some of those stories? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, for every success story, uh, there's about, there's about five stories where someone, uh, you know, let it ride and, you know, uh, for the D gens, I get it. You know, uh, you know, that's why you got to get two tickets, (laughs) you you know, yeah, exactly. You gotta get, you gotta get two tickets, but best of both worlds. Um, you know, it's, you know, we, we try not to like, you know, call these guys out, even though we don't never say (laughs) by name. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely stories where, um, you know, I mean, we've had guys say, look like, you know, let's just, let's just say, for example, right. Uh, we had a guy last year, he, uh, he had a, a, a Loyola championship ticket at a thousand to one odds mm-hmm. Loyola to win the, to win the championship. He got it during football season, right? Everyone's focused on football. He got Loyola at a thousand to one. They beat Illinois, right? Upset the tournament, right? They beat the number seed Illinois and they've got Oregon state's in there in the sweet 16 and they're an eight point favorite. And <laughs> he could have sold the ticket that he paid like $20 for, for four figures, right? Thousands of dollars. He could have sold this, this ticket for that. He that only spent 20 bucks on. And he said to me, I'd be losing money if I sold this ticket, right? Like they're like they're gonna they're gonna beat Oregon State. It's not even a question. I like, love and then and and the the explanations you hear are are crazy looking back on it, right? Because it's always about like team of destiny, uh, <laughs> sister Jean, you know, that sort of stuff. And it's like it's just like all uh, like actual basketball stuff goes out the window. It's all about team of destiny and it's meant to be and and all this stuff. Uh, and so yeah, so he left thousand dollars on the table. Uh, we had a guy who uh, had a Texas Tech ticket worth three three hundred thousand uh, dollars that he did not sell against Virginia in the championship game. Uh, he oh left the, man, that he, one's we, brutal. That offer, was a tough he an, one. He had an he had an offer on the table before the game for one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars that he uh, declined to uh, let it ride against Virginia. Um, and if you so, guys remember yeah, that. If you guys remember that Virginia no, that was down three it. with like seven seconds oh, left and hit a at three the end. to send it to overtime. Yeah. And Ian's so yeah. kind. I thought he was going to bring up the time that uh, Colby was sitting on Matty Corral, <laughs> forty to one to win the Heisman. Yeah, just we tried to yeah. tell when Matt Corral was even money. We tried to tell Colby to listen on prop swap. Wouldn't yeah. listen. That, My that apologies. Was more, that, was slow, that was more of a slow burn, not a not a uh, not a rip your ticket up at uh, at halftime uh, so, type of uh, situation. So, so does anyone have a St. Peter's? Is uh, yeah, there, is there an ask. Iowa State or double seated uh, some tickets out there? Yeah. Uh, so we have a customer. He got St. Peter's to win the region at 500 to one oh. St. Peter's to to win the region at 500 to one. Uh, he bet 25 bucks. Uh, that that's what that's worth thousands. Now, same guy also has St. Peter's to win the championship, uh, at a thousand to one. Uh, so, uh, he's, <laughs> so yeah, so we, we, there's been, unfortunately though, uh, a lot of our business in terms of sellers come from New Jersey. And I don't know if you're familiar, but we've got some antiquated rules uh, in terms of college you can and can't bet oh, on. Yeah, that's, uh, oh yeah, I know El- Illinois saved a lot of betters money not being able to bet on uh, Loyola and Illinois. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, New Jersey is costing their customers uh, some money uh, by not. So we have no futures come from New Jersey uh, from on St. Peter's, right? Oh. So and that's who would be betting on on these futures, right? So uh, that that's been a little unfortunate in terms of uh, our lack of St. Peter's. But um, if Michigan's wins a few more games. I mean, cause that's a, that's a great combination of long shot and public team. Um, Michigan, I think uh, could serve as a, as a huge, uh, some huge sales. Like I said, North Carolina and, uh, and UCLA as well here on the West coast is actually uh, very popular. That rule was created like pre railroad. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I mean, if, as long as we can't, if we can contain it, so they can't bet on the teams yeah, in the state. Like, this, St. Peter's isn't <laughs> taking money. These guys, <laughs> well, they're not taking a fall for anyone. They just beat <laughs> Kentucky. 
And it's okay. hilarious. it's hilarious too because the players, most of them aren't even recruited from the state. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, These days it's like it, you're it, going it, from all I across. I saw an article titled uh The True Cinderella Story, St. Peter's. All it takes is one trip to them their gymnasium to see why. <laughs> and it, it just shits on how like like it's it's not this like big lavish school. And it was like, Yeah, I mean, all right. Anyway, no, off topic. Truly, it, looks, truly it, magic. it looks like a high school, it looks like a yeah. high school yeah. Yeah, outside. Yeah, I know. Now uh yeah, appreciate you coming on. As always, Ian. What about you personally? I know you're you're sweating these games out. You probably got a little action on. What do you like Sweet 16 either against the spread or any futures you would be buying over at PropSwap? Yeah. Well, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say right now, I went to university of Arizona. I'm a wildcat. Uh, I went to all the games in Vegas uh, when they won the pac 12 tournament, that TCU game. Uh, I oh. was, I was yelling at my TV. I don't know <laughs> how they stopped going down low to, to, to Coloco. I mean, he was absolutely dominating the first half. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that Arizona's offense is going to be too much for, for Houston's defense, even, you know, even though that that's their strength. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always pulling for, for Arizona. Uh, in terms of futures and, and teams uh, that that I like, like I said, man, I think I think North Carolina is still super interesting. You know, th- that winner of North Carolina UCLA, uh, which you can both still get at double digits. I'm looking at that matchup uh, as as to advance to the Final Four, right? Uh, so you can still get, I think, North Carolina at 32 to one on Fanduel. Uh, we've got some great tickets uh, on North Carolina still for sale. Uh, and then UCLA as well, I believe is like 16 or 18 to one. Right. So you could take both those teams uh, in terms of futures and then, and, and no matter what, have a, a money like opportunity that. down the road, even if, because if St. Peter springs the upset, I mean, it's going to be go through the roof. And I still think both teams have a shot to be Purdue. I think Matt Painter is a uh, classic for, you know, getting sweet 16, but he can never get that team over the hump with Purdue. So uh, I like UNC or UCLA winner of that matchup to, to go to the final four. U C L A. Yes. UCLA. Yeah, I'm sitting. On, I'm sitting on a UCLA ticket. I'm. I'm going to hang on to it. I feel good about the Bruins. Also got one on uh, Nova, which uh, nice little uh, value there. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll end up <laughs> listing that one over at uh, PropSwap.com. That, 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 that South region is so tough, man. I. Mm. I. That South region is so so tough. I don't know who's coming out of that of that region. Yeah. No. It's. Uh. It's going to be crazy. Well. If you haven't already, make sure you head over to propswap.com. Use that promo code SGP. Give them a follow on Twitter as well. Fun, uh, fun Twitter follow, and also on Instagram at PropSwap. Ian, uh, appreciate your time and uh, best of luck with the rest of the tournament. Yeah, guys, th- thanks for having me and uh, good luck with the rest of the tournament. All Cheers. Right, let it ride. All right. Nice, Sean. All right. Now Seamless we're... transition. Oh, just that sound gets you so jacked. For college basketball over at WinBet. Bet big, win bigger. Get some of those uh, tickets ready to go. Maybe you're going to a little hedge action over at uh, propsoft.com. But really, WinBet, man, they got everything. And of course, you're watching college basketball. What more? What is more fun than having action on college basketball while also firing up the WinBet casino? 100% deposit match up to $1,000. Four new customers, a hundred dollar for dollar, up to one thousand dollars. And uh, again, stay tuned as well for the WinBet Happy Hour. It was actually uh, I, I sent out a little notification on the app. They were offering minus one hundred five on the games. Again, you just gotta you gotta get involved over at WinBet.com. If if, you're, if you aren't, you're leaving money on the table. So much to choose from. All you have to do is download the WinBet app. Or visit WINBet.com to get started today. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older in prison state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you're someone you know has a gaming problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Sister Jean's dancing. She's ready to roll. Nodding her head. Oh man, the Sister Jean bobblehead coming right after they've been el- eliminated. If, Nothing is better. If you're not, many of you I know listen to only the podcast. You're, uh, you know, the newspaper crowd. I get it. I'm one of you. I stand with you. But I do recommend heading over to youtubecom gambling podcast. The set is looking fire right now. Sister Jean is sitting between two beautiful bottles of <laughs> Devil's River uh, whiskey. Bourbon. I don't want to misspeak. One of those. We. I think we got a rye and maybe something else in front of us. Very delicious. 
Uh, shout out to them. That was unsolicited. No, of. that was. They, I mean, they, they they booze booze gets us. Yeah, the talk, they sent so. us uh, they sent us a booze and shout out to Magic Man Blanco. Saw him in the chat. We had some uh, action, Ryan. On the 49ers versus the Packers in the playoff game. Magic Man yeah. Blanco, of course, a man of his word, mailed us a nice collection of uh, JMO bottles to help round out the uh, ever growing collection we have here it's, at our it's bar. It's quite uh shout out to Magic Man. He's and done- shout out to all the <laughs> listeners. I think, you know, we put down a decent amount. Uh, Patty C number one in the power rankings there, but we put down. A we decent- need Sally site to track yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> can we, can we, I'll get machine on a drinks a drinks leaderboard. Um, so, and I don't think we've had to actually buy liquor uh, for the office. So shout out to you guys keeping us uh, well sauced throughout. Yeah. The uh, course of March Madness. All right. Well, let's uh, peace enough, and love. Peace and love. Enough messing around. Let's get to picking the games. Uh, I I because I like to reward the YouTube crowd. We do have a couple games tipping in about thirty seven minutes. I'm going to give Colby ten seconds. St. Bonaventure, Virginia. Who are you taking? Wahoos. NC Wilmington, Northern Colorado. Who we taking? Wilmington. I like that All play. Right. And f- and we got a Middle Tennessee game going on. Love right? the live yeah. stream picks always. Four oh nine on the West Coast. This one's tipping in Philly. Sean, St. Peter's playing down the Turnpike oh in God. Philadelphia against the evil Midwestern painter led three seed Purdue Boilermakers. Minus twelve and a half. Minus one thousand on the money line. Plus six fifty for St. Peter's. One thirty-six and a half is the total, Sean. We don't have a trend when a team has back-to-back covered big numbers and won outright. St. Peter's, of course, was a fade based on the commandment in the yeah. round of thirty-two. They we're now the back. Normally, you would say, "Hey, so much time to smell themselves." So, uh, Sean, how many random fans from New Jersey are going to oh, matriculate down the gonna- turnpike? This is going to be a legit <laughs> home crowd. I know St. Peter's really got fortunate by having this game in Philly. I will throw it over to you guys, but my my initial take is wow, Purdue always has the size advantage. This is going to be a tough matchup, but St. Peter's has played athletically. They've played with size and strength and as their coach Shaheen Holloway clearly said, not a Jersey guy, but he'll fuck you up in an alleyway. That's what he said. His team will fuck you up in an alleyway. They're not scared because they're the team that fucks you up in the alleyway. So Purdue and Matt Painter and his slick back hair, Midwestern coming to Jersey. I don't know if I like this matchup. Well, for those I boys. mean, I, 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 you know, cross the water from Camden. You know what goes on oh, down yeah. there, Sean? Oh, I've been to Camden a number Trenton of times. makes the world takes <laughs> say it. I, I do worry about uh, Purdue size here. <laughs> I mean, I think you know that when that Ivy kid's out on the, it, it's just like it reminds me of Yao Ming ass where he just <laughs> no Edie, not Ivy. Oh, why, why yeah. do I call him? Keep calling him Edie um, or Ivy. These yeah. were old guys. Yeah, it, it, Edie Yao Edie uh, in there in the paint is just he's a tough guard for anyone. But you know, you look at that game, Texas. You could argue maybe should have covered against Purdue. Purdue was allowing a lot of points uh, from the backcourt. Carr and Jones both uh, combined for 40 points. And I think guard play of, of guys that can score, that's kind of where St. Peter's, that's their, that's their wheelhouse. On the other end, you do have Jay Nivey, who again <laughs> He's good. He's yeah, good. very good. Gonna be a nice pro prospect. At times just looks completely unguardable and can clearly get his. But twelve and a half points is is a lot. Uh, St. Peter's though they've been hanging around. They've been good against the spread. Not even just in this tournament run, but the entire season. Twenty two and nine against the spread this season. Not much. Pretty even at the free throw line. But the rest of the advanced not, metrics, as you would imagine, favor Purdue pretty heavily. I mean, maybe they should have had Longwood's fourteen seed. I mean, they they play of all the trap. You know, if you want to say fourteen seeds and lower, all the not so great conference winners. Uh, and St. Peter's plays, plays elite defense, elite uh, defense I, and St. Peter's 64th in the country in offensive rebounding. So not as bad as you would expect coming out of their conference. And guess what? You know, they can hit a three pointer and Purdue that scenario that they're not the best at. So Colby uh, Colby, how see you? 
Well, I think Sha- Shaheen Holloway doesn't right. need to look that far back Dog. on on look look what Miami Dog. just did to Auburn. Mm. All right, and what they did essentially was played small ball, and Walker Kessler only played 13 minutes because of that. When you play small ball and push it, now I know St. Peter's is a slow tempo team, but so was Miami. If you take advantage of the, the, Zach Eady, it takes him a while to get down the court. <laughs> It does. I mean, that, there's no, no that's a good point yeah. because you can get some transition buckets before Edie gets down there. That's a good point. So, so to me, if I if I'm uh, St. Peter's, I'm saying, hey guys, we got to just press this thing. Let's let's. I know that's not our traditional game, but it wasn't Miami's either. And look how that worked out for them. Yeah, I'm all over St. Peter's in the points here. I think this is going to be a game, and I think much like I told you guys with uh, the the Murray state game. I think they're, they're better than what the the market realizes. I I, I think they're a good, a really good basketball team. We saw it. I know no 15 has ever been to an elite eight, Yeah, but max ace miss missed a three that that would have sent him there last year. This, this team could do it. Purdue. We've seen them struggle. You know, they've, they've lost to some teams in the big 10. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut. And a lot of times we see these 15 seeds. And again, this is just kind of uh, going off my memory here, but they they get they get hot shooting, you know, crazy three points, or you know, UMBC was they just couldn't miss a shot. Some of these big underdogs, but you look at you look at their game against Murray State. They shot forty one percent from the field, twenty three percent from three point, but they hit seventy five percent of their free throws. Like it wasn't and they play defense. Yeah, it wasn't some crazy outlier shooting game that helped them go on this run. They, they are a more balanced team Whoa. than your typical 15 making it to the sweet 16. And but that, but I think that's actually the narrative. Cause look at the last two teams that made it to the sweet 16 from the 15 seed. They were oral Roberts and Florida Gulf coast. Like, I think that's the big separation between upsetting a two seed as a 15 and winning a second game is you don't look out of place. You're somehow, I mean, this isn't even the most veteran team. They're just a team that physically doesn't look like they're outmatched. We've seen a lot of teams look physically outmatched in this tournament. And this St. Peter's team is not one of them. If anything against Murray state, they, they, they appeared to be in the same conference. Like there was no difference in, in caliber of athlete coming off the bus or on the court. Yeah, I mean, I think Travion Williams is the X factor for Purdue because he can actually run down the court, and uh, so I, I well, think if you're St. Peter's, you try to get Edie out of the game. He's your second leading scorer. He's also a defensive force with the block shots. Yeah, get some fouls on play, Edie, if you, or if you play small ball and make him run, then you got to take him out. And, and St. Peter's can get to the line. Thirty-one free throw attempts against Murray State. I think that's got to be their formula coming into this game. I'm with you guys. Give me uh give me St. Peter's plus 12 and a half. And the fact that they're 200 and, like Purdue is 204th in the country in defense. So St. Peter's, I know they're not off like setting the charts on fire with their offense, but that's opportunity right there. And and just the dog factor, dog. right? Yeah. Like it, I mean there are some dogs on that team. Has St. Peter's where played a does game? Does Purdue where have the, a dog? Where is this game being played, Colby? Philadelphia. But what arena? Uh, I don't know what like they call have it now. The, has St. Yeah, Peter's it's, played yeah, I think it's here a before? Sixer Stadium, right? If they can figure out the like, if that I'm telling you, Purdue is lazy defending the three point line. Uh, that this is this game is going to be decided. Wells by the Fargo three- Center. That's a Sixer Center, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if they played any games there this year. Little little advantage. St. <laughs> Peter's probably not. Yeah. But I do. I oh, do preseason tourney. I don't know. I do. No, maybe you're right. Just uh, unlikely. I, I do. That's, I, I would just like to see how empty it is for a non turny game oh, with St. Peter's. Did you see the the crowd when they showed up to their their gym? Dude, the crowds. <laughs> I mean, again, we mentioned that when we first started breaking this game down, the crowd is going to be insane. And I, I think not because they have a crazy alumni, but because every Jersey head is oh, going to be like, yeah, yeah. legalized gambling in St. Jersey Peter's. and Pennsylvania. I mean, if you're from Philadelphia, you know, people from Purdue, well, and you drive across state lines, you can bet on St. Saint, yes, Saint Peter's. Exactly. A so. mm. lot of action will be on St. Peter's in the uh, Delco right. uh, area. Let's uh, head over to Chicago, the Midwest. Uh, we're tipping off at 4:25 Pacific time zone. Providence, the four seed. My Friars, Ed Cooley, and the boys taking on the one seed Kansas Jayhawks. It's Bill Self fade. Uh, at least we're, we're we're in the fade zone. Kansas minus seven and a half, minus three fifty on the money line. Are we sure this isn't the eight and a half point line? Yeah, uh, that Providence money line plus two seventy five, one forty one and a half is the total for Kansas or for uh, for the game. Look, you know where Sean and I stand with this one. 
Uh, and I guess we we kind of know where Colby stands as well because the train has left the station. Ed Cooley's not accepting <laughs> any more friends. It's you're, okay. You're riding and dying with Bill Selfie. No, I'll take the points, but no, but, you can't but, take but the Kansas points. will win. How about no, that? No, Colby, oh, come on. What? I say that so Providence will win. No, you're you're. No, you need to take Kansas. I am not Colby, laying do that it for many the, points. Do it for the show. <laughs> Benedict Arnold. It's too many points. That's I mean, too many uh, points. The the thing that concerns <laughs> what, what me. What do we call him? Colony Dan. <laughs> <laughs> is Colony Dan coming back? Colony Dan is, uh, is know, he wants to drink his tea. The King's been great to. Us, but I also Bill like Self. we're building something here. Bill Self has How the best you, team. The Kings game is undeniably good. They play the game the right way, but the colonies yeah. are a scrappy yeah. upstart. Look, that, how do you not? Root I for can't them? do it. All right, real money. Kramer still doesn't think it's a backcourt. I'm, I'm not Ed budging. Cooley. I'm the not mo- budging. He loves right? Ed Cooley. He loves the history of Kansas. He's so torn. Well, the, what does I worry? Do not take Providence. I, I am on Providence. Obviously, I'm going to keep riding Obviously. them uh, until the wheels fall off. Just got down on some Providence uh, mm-hmm. futures. Right, yeah, well, Ryan, pull up the. Uh, beep, boop, 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 boop. While while we're running these, we should we should talk about the future price over at uh, Win because there's some interesting numbers here, and Providence is still a crazy long shot. Now, I am I a little concerned that they that they wasted all their threes <sighs> against the Richmond team. No. I mean, no, they, they were shooting not worried fifty five percent from behind the arc. I'm worried that it levels out, but. Again, that loss in that Big East Conference game came at the perfect time yeah. for this Providence team. And if there's any team, Providence is in that sweet spot where they're not like a St. Peter's where you're worried about them smelling themselves because of some big upsets, but they also don't have any pressure on them. Like they're in that perfect window where they have some scrappy guys. They're they have a great coach here with and essentially with nothing to lose and and the the pressure always seems to get the best of Kansas as we go on in the tournament. Are we not at all concerned that this is going to be a heavy Kansas fan base? And this is this is an away game for Providence. I I mean sh- I know we leaned into that with the St. Peter's angle. I think it works more for I, the underdog than it does no, the favorite. I mean I think I, I know your yeah. angle with Gonzaga like that that's it's a fair point. Um I feel like when you, if you've been to the sports bars in Chicago, it's like that's a, those are Kansas sports bars. You might have a good angle. I guess this the the type of team I would want if we are going behind enemy lines is a team full of dogs, team full of veterans, a, a a team that maybe say ranks sixth in the country in experience behind only Manhattan, Cleveland yeah. State, Texas Southern, Vermont, crazy. and Southern Utah. We're taught. I mean, and and new a hey, breaking news. Kansas does not have the size advantage either. They do not have the toughness advantage. I, they don't have a what advantage. What do you like about this Kansas team? What part of the what what matchup do you like? Because well, the fact that in the Big Twelve, I think is is that's proven to be is, pr- be good. Yeah. But I mean, Baylor, we, they you lost. know what we haven't seen yet, Sean? We haven't seen that stretch of a Bill Self team looking confused as fuck. <laughs> where Bill Self has the empty look on the sideline of I don't have the answer, guys. You're just gonna have to figure it out. Look, I'm on Providence in the points. Oh no, you're not. Yes, no, I get am. The fuck out. Uh, of yes, I, I, I am. Mean, Colby, whatever. Hey, long before you guys knew about Providence, they were my boys. <laughs> all right, you guys were on the NFL train. All right, two all things. Right? One, uh, cousin Mush, actual cousin of mine, uh, season ticket holder of the Providence Friars. Fuck off. I, two, Big East tournament goer oh, as wow. a small person. Okay. I've been a fucking Providence fan since Marty Conlon. Third, right? <laughs> willing to back them with my money in the first two rounds of this tournament. Trains left the station. <laughs> Mark that frame, Kansas minus seven. No, 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 no. You gotta give me the points. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to do on tally sites, your own thing. But just for jinx purposes, <laughs> yeah. I'm listing Kansas yeah, you're right. minus seven and a half. Telling you, you're jinxing it yourself now. No, you know what? Yeah, you're, you're going right. against you're right. me. Okay. You're right. Just put put the pick. Don't don't <laughs> just put the pick. It do, Colby has no impact. He, he will be rooting against Providence. <laughs> All right. He already said Providence not going to win the game. Well, uh, I did that to, to help problems. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. This no. isn't a Let's soccer mom Friars. conversation. Let's go, Friars. It's not even in his. You can't. I, there's no I grew up hating Kansas. There's no enthusiasm in his voice. No. Right. <laughs> Ryan, if you want some enthusiasm, yes, you gotta drink some coffee. Oh man, what about trade coffee? Delicious, delicious coffee. If you're like me, again, a DJ, you staying up late, doing your research, aka just watching games and getting down on a bunch of action. You gotta be. Mm. Gotta be super, super caffeinated. And again, however you you like your coffee, a full bodied roast, something light, trade coffee, 
has you covered uh, to set up and make your best brew at home. Uh, just talking about coffee makes me makes me want to fire up a cup again. I have the the uh, coffee machine where I fill it up night before with these nice uh, you know trade coffee beans. Throw mm. them in the grinder. Wake up to just an awesome. When you wake up, it sucks. Let's be honest. But if you smell the coffee already made, makes it a little bit easier. They even got a little coffee quiz. Get to know you. Get to get you matched to the perfect cup of Joe. And for our listeners right now, Trade Coffee is offering a total of twenty dollars off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com/sgp. It's more than forty cups of coffee for free. Good luck getting that at uh, your coffee shop. Get started. Take their quiz over at drinktrade.com slash SGP drinktrade.com slash SGP for 20% off your first three bags. And while you're, uh, while you're cranked out of your mind on caffeine, Oh, we're not done doing some, uh, doing some stuff on the I, old interweb. I uh, sorry. I was going to talk about my uh, dark roast with a hint of berry in there. Ooh. Mm, yeah. <laughs> It was well, delicious. Ryan, Ryan, whatever you're into, whether it's dark roast and berries or uh, whatever, whatever you're Googling, that should be between you and the uh, Google algorithm. Don't want any uh, ISPs, hackers, advertisers, prying eyes, getting in on your search history, your data. You need to secure your connection to the internet. Highly recommend IP vanish. They are top notch when it comes to VPN. We have IP vanish uh, running God's eye. Again, highly recommend it. Uh, you can use it on devices like a Fire Stick, your um, your Android TV. Best part is IP Vanish again doesn't slow you down, and seventy percent off their yearly plan. That's right, seventy percent off. Are you kidding me? And a thirty day money back guarantee. You'd be crazy not to give it a shot. Just go to ipvanish.com/sgp. Claim your seventy percent savings. ipvanish.com/sgp. All right. Let's go to the nightcap. The we, uh, the undercard is complete. The main event, North Carolina. How wet are the the network executives? North Carolina, the eight <laughs> seed, UCLA, the four seed. I mean, here's the real story. How many of the, like who are the North Carolina and UCLA fans rooting for? Because that's who's going to take over that arena uh, in Philly. N- not seeing my beautiful face. Apologies. UCLA laying two and a half. Sean minus one forty on the money line plus. 115 for North Carolina. 141 and a half is the total. Uh, this number is just too small. Uh, I mean, I get it. North Carolina has been fun, but now they run into a, a a team full of dogs. Well, and and I got uh, I bet it earlier today at two. I think the the news with Hawkins. There's some videos of him walking around looking pretty good. I think that may have moved the line back up to uh, two and a half. You know UNC, it, they're not going to go down easy. They they've out rebounded their opponents in the tournament by twenty four. That's kind of crazy. That's uh, their game. But uh, also, I think that that Baylor game may have drained them a little bit. I know they have some rest, but I think you know being up big and then almost squandering it. I don't know At UCLA though. How do you not like what you've seen out of UCLA? They looked rough uh, for the majority of that Akron game, but since then. As they closed out Akron and covered the spread, and then you know the St. Mary's is a decent team, and they just they just dominated. This is a well balanced, experienced team that is really going to have trouble. Uh, I mean, being stopped, I think, especially with North Carolina, who again, uh, you know, maybe is that Michigan team similar, a, a team that has some talent, underperformed in the regular no. season, but I think I think they already. UNC loses this game. They're still happy with their season. I don't think you can say that about UCLA. Yeah, and I think if you're UCLA, this again, we're back to the. This is what they came back for. Now the focus is is even more. They understand the one way. Like th- there's only one way that Carolina wins the game, and so they they just have to rebound as a team. Five guys have to crash the boards, and if they if they do that, they'll be fine because. How many guys? Like how many guys do you trust with the ball in their hands at the end of the game on UNC? And how many guys do you trust with the ball in their hand at the end of the game for UCLA? Again, we're 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 talking about a two and a half point spread near Pickham. Obviously, I'm taking UCLA. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I Hawkwes's injury is huge, I and mean, we'll see how healthy he is when he goes. They seemed I, fine without him. Yeah, but I still think the front court between Baycott and Manic. Uh, they could present problems for UCLA, but I think at the end of the day, and I think the best player in this tournament so far 
is Tiger Campbell yeah. and yeah. Tiger Campbell doesn't turn the ball over. We saw it with that USC game where he really didn't turn a ball that he went the whole game without a turnover. The UCLA did and mainly That's because insane. of Tiger Campbell. And then look at what the only five turnovers last game, they're third in the nation at taking care of the ball. And then when you mix in the way that they take care of the ball with Tiger Campbell, how he's played hitting huge shots. Go back to the Akron game. That they needed too. a basket. Uh, they needed a basket. They needed a basket. And uh, that hair's got to be heavy, right? And Campbell came through for them, man. And then they, but they have Jazang that can hit big time shots. They have a, a slew of players. Their experience. That's another thing. Uh, we the, haven't well, seen a Juzang game, right? Like I, I know the 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 Wakes, uh man is the is the is the playthrough guy now. But like, when does when does uh, Juzang show up and have like, have a moment? Maybe it's here. Maybe Tiger, it's here. Tiger yeah. Campbell though too has. I mean, he you know kind of came to prominence last year in the tourney, but he's he's even improved a lot from last year. To, to Colby's point, his ball handling is great. He's just that like kind of uh, almost in the in the way that Chris Paul is annoying to guard. Uh, and just kind of all, you know, he's got good angles, d- plays a clean game. And UCLA, they didn't have some sort of crazy shooting game that helped them win by 26. They were four for nine from the three point, so it wasn't like they were just draining threes, which they they have a chance to get hot uh, from behind the arc. I mean, they're 57th, or uh, I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I was hey, wait, at what, what, sh- they are shooting the three. Yeah, they're they're uh, well, they're they're hitting at ninety uh, first percent in the country for for. But as far as shooting threes in and in the actual game, they don't shoot that many of them. Yeah, but when they do shoot, they they're pretty efficient at, at uh, just over thirty five percent. Um, it's I, a, you know, it's a, again not surprisingly UNC pretty lazy defending the three point line. So I mean, the storyline of the game besides the turnover factor, I think, is how well uh, Jaime Jaquez will be healthy. And also, Miles Johnson, Cody Riley, the bigs of UCLA. Miles Johnson, the transfer from uh, Rutgers, uh, fifth year senior, super athletic. He's going to be, he's going to have to shut down the bigs. Baycott and Manic are a force. So yeah. uh, I, I, I am going to go UCLA, though. I think they have too many, cl- too many clutch players, too much experience. Um, to, to, a lot to of lose clutch. I, I yeah. don't see. I'm trying. I was trying to look up a Tiger Campbell most outstanding player of the tournament Ooh. future. I don't see it. Uh, Waquez is 33 to one. Juzang 25 to one. He it's doesn't. Like we, he doesn't get the storylines. I've never understood it. If yeah. you've watched them over the NBA past talent, the past why, year, right. he, yeah, uh, he's been the backbone of UCLA. Oh, you're talking about Tiger opinion. Campbell. Yeah. I think he can win that kind of award in, in, in with like the way that he like at times was just like, give me the ball. I'm going to go get fouled and get us a couple points. No, I mean, he, and he, and again, there are a bunch of stars on that team and he does a good job of distributing the ball, keeping everyone involved. And still he has that switch where it's like, okay, I need to get to the line. I need to get to the bucket flips that switch again. I, I mean, I think it's easy to make a case that UCLA is has at times looked the best in the tournament. I think that Akron game probably threw people off, but again, I think it was a combination of UCLA coming in a little sleepy and just in general Akron not getting the respect they deserve as an opponent. I, like I also think although North Carolina has like s- traditional big size, like the the playmaker size that UCLA has is could be equally a problem for North Carolina. Like who's going to guard Juzang? Yeah, I mean, I, I, who, it's like, going to be interesting to see the, just the matchups in general. So, but, um, I, yeah, anyway, I think we Jules all Bernard, I think, is a, a gigantic X factor because when he's on, he can really light it up for UCLA. He's, a, you're right. He's another guy that I mean, they have probably NBA, is not. Yeah, like these are like NBA sized like stretch players that I, I don't know if. But I, but I do think North Carolina's well. got the the front court that yeah. that you know uh, a lot of teams in the NCAA tournament don't have. So. That's the only, but that's the only way they win the game. I think there's a couple versions that UCLA can win. Miles, right. I think Miles Johnson is a huge X fire. Him and Cody Riley defending Baycott and Manic. Maybe some foul trouble finally. Although they are getting one of their refs traveling uh, to the game. So <laughs> yeah, I saw that six fifty nine on the West Coast. We're back in Chicago. The eleven seed Iowa State. The ten seed Miami. Miami lane two and a half minus one forty five on the money line. Iowa State plus one twenty. One thirty three is the total. Iowa State is officially the team I have seen the fewest minutes of in this tournament for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Uh, just the least amount of actual focus time. Miami uh, again. We when we discussed the matchup first round, we said the back the court of Miami versus the size of USC. Obviously, we know how that worked out. Uh, Miami has used that back court to get all the way to the Sweet Sixteen. This is a tough matchup for me because on one hand, Miami has all the ingredients 
that you want to back in March. Uh, but also, you know, Big Twelve. I, I don't want to fade all the Big Twelve teams all of a sudden. Uh, so w- what are we doing, Colby? Uh, I think I think we take the Cyclones uh, first off. The they're not far from Chicago, so I think this yep, is going to be an Iowa State that. crowd. And what does Iowa State do unbelievably well? Miss guard, free throws. guard the three. <laughs> And what does Miami do? They're a guard heavy team Uh, teams so far you LSU and Wisconsin and Wisconsin can shoot the three. They're seven. They went seven for 33 against Iowa state shooting the three. That to me is the the real X factor because Miami does not have a a front court game. Um, I I, I think Iowa state's going to win this one, but I mean, Miami's made me look like a fool before I I thought Jim Laranaga did a, had a great game plan against Auburn, but I think Iowa state has, has a, a, a team that is playing defense at an unbelievable level right now. Elite. Yeah. And I, I just think with the home crowd, with the way they've been defending the three, which is the strength of Miami, Iowa state is going to win this game. And also Look, I know uh, people think, okay, Charlie Moore, six years senior, Miami's got some experience. Uh, Iowa State's an experienced team too. Rockingham, it's been there. What I think fifth year by, senior by yeah. Ken Palm's metric, they're a more, much more experienced team. Um, and, and I think you know, on the flip side, you, you got to Iowa State's just a tough team because you know the, the the statistical profile is not beautiful when it comes to their ability to score the bucket. Yeah. It typically comes They're off kinda of like a poor man's havoc. Texas Tech. And, and, the, and I will the one area where I would be concerned is that my like Iowa State lot of havoc based points turning people over and Miami takes care of the ball really well. So while you're right about the three point defense. Yeah, but they don't they don't need the three point to necessarily win. They they beat uh, Auburn by 18. They only had three three pointers to do it. Like they 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 can the the guards can but get inside. I, I think what they did there was the pace. Um they they really move to an up tempo game, but Iowa State doesn't play that big. You know, Auburn plays ridiculously big. I think Iowa State, from an athletic standpoint, will be able to match them. Yeah. Plus, I mean, to me, massive free throw uh, percentage discrepancy. Iowa State sixty eight point four, Miami seventy four point five. In a close small spread, I, I I like what I've seen out of this Miami team. Would I be shocked if Iowa State plays good defense and makes it tough for them? No, but I, I'm still rocking Miami. I I just uh, this Miami team is. We haven't seen them look bad. I mean, there was a little stretch against USC, and I guess like watching them all year long, they weren't a consistent team. That was the problem. I mean, they had stretches where they were the best team in the ACC, but they also had stretches where they just couldn't get it together. And what I would be concerned about, and I'll take the dog here because I think the Iowa State defense, like when they have that problem scoring the bucket, it's going to turn into an ugly game. And I I don't know like. This uh, this Big Twelve conference in general, dare we say, are they the SEC of uh, basketball? Yes, conferences? yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, look. Uh, and another thing is, Iowa State was bringing in a new coach, TJ yeah. Otzelberger. They brought in a slew of transfers, so I don't believe the analytics speak for their season uh, and, uh, and, as, as and the way they're playing right now. You know F what I mean? You. Like F the you. I think Iowa State's playing really unbelievable defense. I think you can argue it's it's among the best in the nation right now. Uh, I mean, Ken Palm has hit their collective metric for the season at five. So, I mean, if you want to front load that with some weight, I, you know, I'll take that argument. All right, lock dog tease. Time for the lock and dog. No tease. <laughs> Brought to you by StableDuel.com. Horse racing DFS, but it's simplified. You want to get a little action on the ponies? Of course you do. Imagine just uh, you're watching college basketball day. Also got a nice stable duel. Run, uh, go and get the TVG uh, TV set up. You can win as much as twenty five thousand dollars with one entry. That is insane. They also have free games uh, to get you kind of started, get your hooves wet in the uh, action. There, free games weekly. Just so much, so much fun to play. We have a horse racing Slack channel. You can come in there, pop around, ask some, uh, ask some stable duel questions as far as building your stable. All you got to do is head over to stableduel.com. See how many winners you can pick in your stable. I'll see you in the winner's circle. Play, race, win. Yes. Nice job, Sean. No, oh, thanks. Uh, so I, I see what Sean, so Sean, uh, in a crafty move where he knows there's not a lot of options, he put his lock and dog down ahead of time on the sheet in an attempt to then take mm. credit. 
for anyone else who is then quote copying his selection. So who is the real Benedict? I wonder, huh? Well, I'm looking at the sheet now. I don't see anything. (laughs) Go go ahead. Give us your lock and your dog. You want to do two locks? No, we only did one lock on the Thursday show. If you have an issue with the locks, you should have addressed it then. UCLA lock Providence money line dog. Okay. It's the only way to play. I am also going UCLA (laughs) lock. Uh, I still, I, Hold out hope that you can find that too. Uh, maybe maybe WinBet will be generous and pop that back up, or you know, I'm seeing what twos in the wild right now. Uh, or bet it, you know, it, when they have the reduced juice, maybe move that half a point. But yeah, UCLA minus two and a half, Providence on the money line. Dog. What's this? I mean, the Providence money line. I'm getting down on that heavy right now. Two seventy five right now, and I did get a little. I have Villanova, UCLA officially added some Providence action into the portfolio. Ooh. And again, Ian made a great. You know, I hadn't really ever thought about using prop swap in that way. Um, as a like a first I like look. them as a money line. Why not take them and then sell it? So uh, like that as well. Colby, give us your lock and your dog. The lock is UCLA. Tiger Campbell's. Playing oh, at no. an unbelievable level oh, right no. now. The dog. Look, I told you, I can't take the Friars because the Friars are going to win in advance. So I got to take Kansas. So the dog has got to be Saint Peter's. All the right, they guys. get it done. Purdue is oh, Purdue. All right, line. let's That's ride. That's why they call him Perdone. Let's ride. Why let's give co- my client some value. Coming out hard. <laughs> I just, I just put an irrational amount of money on Providence. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you guys as always for tuning in the show. Give us a follow on Twitter at gambling podcast. Still plenty of time to enter merch madness. Just emailed the first four winners of the SGP hoodie. Very easy to get set up. Just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash merch madness and uh, send in your review there. Very easy to qualify sports gambling podcast.com slash merch madness. We'll be drawing another four winners on Monday. Uh, you're welcome, America. Make sure you check out the college basketball experience with Colby Dant. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to let it ride. Thank you for oh. participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. The YouTube chat's calling us pussies for only taking one you lock. <laughs> let it ride. <laughs>